fellow equestrians, it's Claire here, and today I'm going to teach you all everything you would ever need to know about blanketing. So when you're talking about blanketing horses, there is usually a lot of confusion and controversy. So I'm going to talk about all aspects of blanketing horses, all the information you would need to know, and the first thing is deciding whether or not to blanket your horse. Now there are a lot of factors whether you should blanket your horse or not. A couple of the big ones are age, how old is the horse. Um, like my full Oakley, he's being blanketed this winter um, because he's so little and young. It's a lot harder for him to regulate his temperature as it would be for uh, an older horse. So he's being blanketed because um, he's going to get a lot colder than a much bigger horse would be because he's young and small. Another thing would be work. What's your horse's purpose? Pasture horses. If there's no need, they can grow a nice big winter coat, they're healthy, then they're not gonna need a blanket. But if you're riding your horse and working your horse all winter long um, and you don't want them to grow a winter coat because when you're working them they're gonna get sweaty, then you would blanket. Lots of people blanket their horses um, for the sole purpose of to keep them from growing a big winter coat. Um, because you can come across some issues if you're riding a horse with a big thick winter coat and they get sweaty then you can come to have some issues with that like colic and hypothermia and all of that stuff which is not good plus it's a lot harder and time consuming you've got to get off the horse put a cooler on them try to keep them try to keep their temperature good but if you have your horse blanketed and they've got a nice short coat take the blankets off, hop on for a ride, and they don't even get sweaty because they don't feel hot. Another reason could be the horse's health um, or how easy it is for them to uh, keep weight on. Lots of people blanket horses that are um, a lot harder to keep weight on to keep them from getting skinnier over the winter. Um, horses use a lot of the nutrients they take in to grow a thick winter coat. So if you give them blankets, which makes them not have to grow a winter coat, all of those nutrients, instead of going to growing long hair, is gonna go to their body and overall um, help them be healthier. But for the most part, all horses have the ability to grow a nice thick winter coat and definitely don't need to be blanketed. There are lots of situations where blanketing could be easier for you, blanketing could be easier for your horse, or it could be healthier for you and your horse. So. Putting all those factors into mind, if you decide that you do want or need to blanket, the next thing you need to find out is what size does my horse need? Because you need blankets to blanket your horse. Now, I will insert a uh, link to Kensington's video on how to measure your horse for a blanket. It's pretty simple. Go from their chest to their tail. I will insert a couple clips and pictures of how to do that. And once you find your horse's size, then you know what blankets to get. And then the next thing, once you figure out your horse's size and get the perfect blanket, would be what brands to look for. Um, now, my favorite brand of blanket is Kensington, uh, Kensington Products. Most of my blankets are from them. Um, a couple of my blankets aren't from them just because I already had them or I got them on sale or something, but out of all of the brands of blankets I've used, Kensington's are my favorite. They're the most durable, they've got the most cool colors, they have all types of blankets, and they're most functional. They put so much technology and thought into every aspect of the blanket. I absolutely love it. Now, if for some reason you say, but Owen is a size 81, um, so say I got him an 81, but this brand maybe their blankets run a little small and my horse is getting rubs on his shoulders or sores somewhere where the blanket's rubbing the hair off. Here are some things you can do to prevent causes of rubs. Obviously the first one would be to get a blanket that fits them properly, but if you, for some reason, your horse is getting rubs and you can't get a different blanket that fits them better, a little thing to help with that is obviously making sure your horse is clean, but also 
I like to use uh, like Shoshin or something like that that uh, makes their coat uh, shiny and soft. And that then makes the hair slick so that when they're walking and their shoulders rub against the blanket, it's a lot slicker and it keeps it from rubbing so bad. So that's a trick I like to use if you're noticing rubs after, you know, before you put your blanket on, spray it with a couple sprays of Shoshin, brush it, and then put your blanket on. I find that that helps a lot. The next step would be how to put blankets on, um, which all, a lot of blankets are different, but for the most part, they all kind of are the same. So of course, before you put on any blanket, you need a clean horse. Typically every fall, I give my horse one nice big bath right before I put their first sheet on, so to make sure they're nice and clean. If it's too cold already, a good grooming will work. You want to make sure that there's no dirt or anything underneath there that's going to rub against the blanket and get give them sores or anything like that, which wouldn't feel nice. So every time before you put on a blanket, make sure you've got a clean horse. The first thing you need to do is obviously gently put the blanket up on your horse. I struggle with this because I am short and I have a tall horse. <laughs> make sure that when you are putting on your blanket, you're not going to surprise and scare your horse. So do it nice and slowly if you can. Once you get it up there, you're going to have to push it around a little to get it to be exactly where it needs to be. The next thing you would do is attach the front buckles or sometimes they have clips. And make sure they're not too loose because if you have the neck really loose, that's what's going to give your horse those rubs on their shoulders which aren't very nice. But once you've got that front end done, then you move to the belly straps. So most belly straps will have two and they will cross like an X. So you would take the front strap from one side and clip it to the back and then the back belly strap and clip it to the front. You want to make sure that these straps aren't too tight where they're going to squeeze your horse and cause rubs, but you don't want to make sure that they're so loose to where the blanket's going to move around a lot. Once you have those belly straps done, you then move to the leg straps. And then that keeps your blanket from tipping on the back from side to side. So you'll take the leg strap from one side, cross it in between their legs, and then clip it to the other side of the blanket, and then vice versa with the other one. Take your strap, cross it between their legs, and clip it. Making sure you're not clipping in their tail. They need their tail out. So, once you've done all of that, your blanket is on and your horse is good to go. Every time you put on your blanket, make sure everything's fitting properly and your horse is going to be comfortable because sometimes things can get moved around. Same thing with those leg straps. You don't want them too tight. You don't want them too loose. Somewhere about in the middle is pretty good. Another um, quick tip when you are Putting your blanket on your horse, make sure that you clip your clips towards your horse, not out. You just want to be super careful um, because if you clip them outward and your horse rubs up on something, you don't want them to accidentally clip themselves to something and panic. Um, so just for safety purposes, always make sure you clip those buckles towards your horse so there's no chance of them accidentally clipping themselves and getting stuck on something. The next thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is neck blankets. Some blankets will come with neck blankets and some won't. There are so many factors that attribute to why you blanket your horse, how you blanket your horse the way that you do, what you put on, when you put it on, but neck blankets are something where if it's going to be wet and your horse is going to be outside, I go ahead and put a neck blanket on as well to keep the water off of their neck. The only other time I put a neck blanket on because for the most part, if your horse's body is blanketed, they're not going to grow a ton of hair on their neck. But I guess it's personal preference. If you don't want your horse to grow any hair on their neck either, you can put a neck blanket on. But typically, I don't put a neck blanket on until it's like really, 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 really cold. Uh, sometimes here in Missouri, it gets cold enough to where you have to put two blankets on and then a neck blanket. Um, or like I said, if it's raining. Some people don't even have neck blankets at all. Like I said, depends on personal preference and situation. But now we have to talk about what kind of blanket you need to put on and when. Blankets come in many different weights for many different temperatures. So the thickness and warmth of the blanket is dependent on the weather. There are sheets, there are lightweight blankets, there are medium weight blankets, and then there are heavyweight blankets. So now I'm going to talk to you about what blankets need to be on when. So I live here in Missouri in the USA and we use Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna talk in degrees Fahrenheit, but I will put the Celsius version up on the screen so you guys can see. 
to those of you who are on a Celsius scale. Now all of this is dependent on, you know, there's wind chill, there's if it's gonna be wet and rainy, or if it's going, you know, who knows? Just because the temperature is one thing doesn't mean that's how it feels. But for the most part, usually when it's around 40 degrees, I'll put a sheet on my horse with zero grams of fill. Then when it gets to around the 30s, I'll either have a lightweight or a medium weight on. Typically lower 30s, I'll put on a medium weight. Upper 30s, they'll have their lightweight. Then once you get into the 20s, usually upper 20s, I still have that medium weight on. And then lower 20s, I'll put on a heavy weight. And obviously anything under 20 degrees, they have their heavy weight on. If it gets really, really cold to where it's like negative degrees Fahrenheit, I'll um, sometimes have to put two blankets on them. Um, and then usually that's when I'll put on a neck blanket as well. Now there are a couple different types of blankets. There are stable blankets and turnout blankets. Stable blankets are usually um, meant for horses that are gonna be inside in stalls. Usually they're not waterproof and usually they're a lot less durable. Then you have your turnout sheets, which those are, for the most part, much more durable, and those are gonna be waterproof if your horse is gonna be outside. Even when my horses are inside, I still have turnout blankets on. I prefer them because they're more durable and waterproof for any situation, and they last so much longer. So, now that you know about all the different types of blankets, you know when to put what blanket on, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to take care of your blankets. So blankets can last a long, 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 long time if you take care of them. Um, typically, I don't purchase a blanket unless it's at least 1,200 denier. So denier is the measurement of strength, basically, that they give horse blankets. Um, the more denier, the tougher the blanket is. I typically buy all my blankets at 1,200 denier. Um, to make sure that they're gonna last and my horses aren't gonna tear them apart. Now, to keep your blankets lasting long, typically, you know, taking care of them when you have them on your horse or not. Um, you know, storing them somewhere that's not out in the elements and where it's gonna get ripped up or, or anything like that. After every winter, I take all of my blankets and I take them to the dry cleaners to have them cleaned. And then I take the blankets that need small little repairs to a blanket repair lady who will sew anything up, patch anything up, uh, fix a strap or some anything like that that needs to be fixed. And that is so much cheaper than purchasing a whole new blanket. So once all that is done, I will then put the blankets in trash bags and store them in plastic containers to make sure that, you know, they're not going to get wet, they're not gonna have anything touch them. They're going to basically sit there and be stored until next winter. And then, by next winter, you've got brand new perfect blankets. Some of the blankets I have today, I've had for years and used on so many different horses. So, there's that for you. I know that was a lot of information and there is so, 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 so much more information about blankets out there and studies behind all of these things, but I don't have forever to talk about all this, so I just gave you guys the gist of it. I will put some links in the description below to some good articles about blanketing if you guys want to look more up on it and read about the theory behind it and more specific studies other than just my words. So if you want to look more into that, check the description. But yeah, for the most part, that is the gist of blanketing horses. Now that I've talked to you guys all about that, now I'm going to talk to you guys about the sponsor to this video. So, huge shout out to My Horse World Club for sponsoring this video. They are an amazing community for horse people. They have a YouTube channel, they have an Instagram. Their YouTube channel has amazing videos and their Instagram has great content too. So if you guys have a second, seriously, go check them out. I will put their links in the description below. Um, but their YouTube channel is My Horse World Club and so is their Instagram. I have absolutely fallen in love with um, their page and what they do. So My Horse World Club is a community for all equestrian disciplines all around the world. It's just this awesome 
community for all horse people to come together. They share their love and their experiences with horses and it's just great. Their YouTube channel has barn vlogs and how to's and, and all sorts of amazing videos that you guys should check out. So please go check them out, My Horse World Club. You won't regret it. Okay, so I think I have talked as much as I could possibly talk about blanketing. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it, and I guess I will catch you guys on my next video. Bye!